This is the story of how we quit our jobs. We've officially been self-employed for one month now and we're ready to share some of the details. In this video, we're gonna talk about our background, how we got here, our mindsets around this big life decision and our plans for the future. First, a little bit of background on us. If you're new here, I'm Elena and this is Alex and we've been on a journey of self-building our own home for about three years now. And throughout this entire time, we've been working corporate jobs until recently. So Alex left his job in March and I left my job last month. But before we get into talking about the why and how behind this big life decision, let me give you a high level on just some background information that we have not really shared on YouTube before. We both graduated from the same engineering school in 2016 and 2017 with bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and shortly thereafter got pretty standard engineering jobs, uh, nine to five style jobs. They were fairly high paying. We both started like at 65, 70,000. And by the time we ended our corporate careers, at least for the time being, we were making about $100,000 a year. The salary was great. It allowed us to save money, pay off our school debt. We both had about $20,000 in debt coming out of school, which we were able to pay off pretty quickly. It wasn't long after we started working in corporate that we realized that the work setting wasn't ideal for both of us. We both are naturally really creative people and we felt a little bit constrained with the standard nine to five workplace. Yeah, I can't really say many bad things about my workplace. It was super comfortable, great people, but it just felt like I was doing the same thing every single day. And I, when I look back at my five or six years there, five and a half years to be exact, I cannot differentiate any of the years, let alone any of the days or months. It all felt like basically the same thing, just over on repeat. My experience was a little bit different. The roles that I held always had a little bit of challenge and I enjoyed them. But in general, I felt like I always wanted to pursue my own thing. The bottom line is when we started our corporate jobs, it was not long thereafter that we kind of knew it wasn't really the path for us. It was what we had to do for the time being to save money and make money. But at the end of the day, we kind of had an entrepreneurial itch that we really needed to satisfy. Yeah, and we both have always been entrepreneurial people. I can go back to a story when I was in high school and I made a bracelet when I was at a summer camp. And when I came back and I was at work, someone asked me if I could make them a bracelet and someone else asked me if I could make them a bracelet. And I realized right then that I could capitalize on the fact that everyone wanted a bracelet. And I gathered up a couple of friends and we started making them and we fundraised money for the Alzheimer's Association. So although I wasn't making profits, I was still capitalizing on an opportunity. And I feel like that is a part of who Alex and I are as people. I had a similar story in college, senior year, my buddy who studied turf grass science had a grass koozie that he made out of some scrap turf grass. And I saw that and I was like, that thing is really cool. We should try to make them and sell them. And he was in it to start, but eventually he just was like, you can just have that idea, I don't care. And I rolled with it in our like spring um, scrimmage game for the football team. I went and got a scrap of Oh no, I went to Home Depot and bought a piece of turf grass and literally cut it up into strips, wrapped it over a 12 ounce can and then hot glued it together. And then I went, I went around at the tailgates at this big alumni scrimmage game and was basically selling these things out of a backpack for like three or four dollars each or something. I ended up making like four or five hundred dollars that day selling these little turf grass koozies uh, to alumni that were just out tailgating that day. But that would be, yeah, my most recent entrepreneurial example. I thought for a little bit I was gonna make that a real business and yeah, that didn't, didn't last long. But I think the moral of the story is, is we've kind of always known that Corporate wasn't the ideal place for us. And so about three years ago is when we kind of started formulating a plan. And with that plan came building a house. And around that time that we were discussing the self-build home, we thought, well, this would be a really great opportunity to document this and put it on the internet. So that's when we started the YouTube channel. COVID had just hit. So we also had a little bit of extra time to learn how to edit and figure out the best camera gear and that sort of thing. And thus Mason Dixon Acres was born. We realized that we could potentially make money off of the things that we were passionate about. And so we had our YouTube channel, we started doing things on Instagram, and from there it just ended up growing. And honestly, we did not get monetized on YouTube for, uh, I want to say a year and two months, something like that. I think at that point we were about 50 videos in. And so it was definitely a, you know, it was a little bit of a long haul into even getting monetized. And when I say getting monetized, 
at that point we were making like five dollars a week or ten dollars a week or something like that it was not much at all and that was the only income we were making too R right so this is a year later after we've started the channel the first paycheck we ever get is five dollars <laughs> yeah but that didn't deter us from continuing to make the videos and actually about two years ago we made a video called the perfect day which you can still go back and watch we had just gotten a new camera we wanted to do a cool film project with it and on a podcast somewhere i had heard this exercise about envisioning your perfect day and like kind of manifesting that so we're like let's just make a video about what we want our perfect day to be and basically at the time, you know, we were living our perfect day on the weekends, right? Two out of seven days a week. And it, the, the real challenge in our life was like, how do we make that seven out of seven days a week? And one of the themes was we don't really like crave, you know, big expensive trips or nice things or anything like that. Like we just want to be at home doing what we want to do, working on projects, making things, creating things. And so that video just sort of explained that. And yeah, that was two years ago. So to give you an idea, like this was not a rash decision at all to leave our jobs. To go off of that, that video kind of started the journey of us manifesting this into reality. So probably from the point that we made that video until even now, we talk about our dreams and our goals every single day. And our dreams and our goals are not small. And by doing that, we are almost like envisioning things until they become reality. And, and taking small steps to, towards them. And like, keeping each other accountable. You know, the whole 1% better every day like gets, gets you to the end goal. And, and actually building a house, I feel like, is a really good example of that because there's just like a bajillion little bits of percents that it takes to get to even a completed stage of a house build, let alone the whole build. So that manifestation exercise, I think, that we did two years ago and just happened to like put on film, I think was a really good foreshadowing of sort of where we're at now and like why we wanted to make this decision. Like this was not something we just woke up one day and quit our jobs. Like we have really been thinking about this and working towards this for literally years now. And kind of what Alex was saying is this wasn't something that happened overnight. It was a ton of small actions that have added up to this moment. There's a quote out there that says, luck is when opportunity meets preparation. And we felt like that's exactly what happened to us this year. We had been preparing for so long for a moment where we would have the opportunity to try this out and make this our full-time thing. Yeah, and it came in little bits and pieces. It wasn't one giant, you know, swing or something. Like we've been gradually building income streams with the Mason Dixon Acres brand. You've probably probably seen it in certain aspects of our content, like brand partnerships. Of course, ad revenue was there from the sort of the beginning of the channel. Affiliate marketing has also become an income stream. So it's been, you know, kind of a gradual progression. Any one of those income streams alone, we would be completely broke on. Like it's not, we're not making tons of money, right? We're, we're covering our cost of living. Um, but our goal now that we have the time and the bandwidth, kind of, because we're still building a house, but we, we do want to sort of develop those streams of income and grow them and create more of our own content controlled on our own platform. But we'll get into that in just a little bit. So some people who look at our situation, if you knew all the numbers, you might think it is a little bit risky because like Alex said, we are basically just covering our cost of living. But for us, time is worth so much more than money will ever be worth. And we are happy with that as our ultimatum right now, because if we never take this this opportunity and go after it and say we're going to try to make mason dixon acres our full-time thing we will wake up when we're 50 one day and say what if and yeah. that's like my biggest fear is that i didn't live out my passion and see and to see what happened yeah and so for us it made sense that okay we can we can pay for our cost of living let's take the risk let's go after our dreams Let's continue to help other people reach their, their own goals with educating them about homesteading and self-building and, you know, build a legacy for, for ourselves. Yeah, the time versus money thing is just so incredibly important because I think in our society, in American society anyway, money is so important. And it is, don't get me wrong. We are very frugal and very money conscious, right? We, we're trying to build a house without taking a loan. So we definitely understand budgeting and budget tracking and all that and uh, money is important to us, but as long as we can meet our expenses, 
the time freedom is literally the most wealthy thing that I feel like we could ever have. Like being able to wake up every day, I mean, Elena for the past month, me for the past kind of like three months, waking up every day and not really even need, needing to know which day of the week it is because you've got your goals ahead of you. For me, it's working basically from sun up to sun down. Like I'm still busting my butt out here, you know, pulling wire and, you know, putting it up siding or that sort of thing. So that freedom of time is like, literally amazing. I, I can't even describe it. I can't describe it. I've never had this much time where I didn't have to go to a job really since college. I mean, even in the summers we did internships and everything. So it's like, it's kind of like a whole different world. And once you experience it, like at least for me, I don't really ever want to go back to corporate and I'm going to work pretty hard to make sure that that happens. And I think another thing for us since we've made this transition is we were already working extremely long days. So we would go to work, come home, work on Mason Dixon Acres stuff until bed or work on the house. And now it's kind of just transitioned into, okay, we wake up, we do Mason Dixon Acres stuff, we work on the house and we're still working like 14 hour days every day, even on the weekends, because we have this huge goal in front of us that we want to reach. Right. So. And for a lot less money too, by the way. I mean, we were making uh, over 200,000 a year as engineers. I'm not going to say the exact number we're making now, but it's a lot less, a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked a little bit about mindset. One thing I want to kind of circle back on and touch upon is a mindset that I think has really helped us grow in this journey. And that's having the mindset of abundance versus scarcity. So I think anytime you have a big goal or a dream, especially when it comes to starting a business, it's easy to see competition and say, oh, I could, I could never make it or my products won't compare or whatever it is. That is more of a scarcity mindset. But if you change your mindset and you look at everything as an opportunity, and look at there's so much abundance out there, I feel like you can literally achieve anything. <clears throat> yeah, competitors, it might seem scary, I guess, from the outset, but like the, the world of a co competition-free business idea is pretty much over. Like the internet has kind of killed niches that don't have any competition. But we've found that as long as we're providing value to other people and brands and, basically creating content that we enjoy creating and letting that show through in the work, we can make a living off of it. Like there's value in that and, and that's what we're going to do going forward. So with that, let's talk about what we actually are going to do in the future and how we're going to be sort of further expanding our monetization in order to make this an actual sustainable living. And it kind of revolves around our website, honestly. Um, we're on obviously all these social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook being the main ones, but we are not in control of these platforms. Really at any minute, you know, YouTube can change the algorithm. We get no more ad revenue. We, you know, can't do any more brand sponsorships because we can't reach any audience. But the one platform that probably will always be around is Google. And that's something that, I don't think a lot of people could live with, including me. I couldn't have built a house without Google, I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> but yeah, so we're planning on really building out our website and that's a project that I'm taking on. So we're in the process of switching to a whole new hosting platform. And on that website, we're gonna have so many resources on there for both free and then also some paid options as well. So we're thinking about creating workbooks, courses, all sorts of things to help other people on their homesteading and self-build journeys. And that's just a very high level of what we're envisioning, but we're in the process of working on some really cool big projects that we're really excited to share with you guys in the near future. I get requests for building plans and I do want to release the plans to this house eventually. Um, but even smaller stuff, like we do have one set, we have one digital product live on our website right now. It's a chicken feeder, a J-tube chicken feeder that I made in CAD and we use them. We, we really like the design. That is the type of thing that I think we could really expand upon. Uh, we're we're going to have our spreadsheets that we've used to organize this build on here, all of the cost and budgeting spreadsheets, even things down to like how I organize our circuit breaker panel, all sorts of miscellaneous resources that I've had to put together for myself in order to you know, accomplish this build. We wanna make those accessible to other people and so that it can help 
their build journey as well. Additionally, we're thinking about eventually getting into the physical product space. I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna manifest just yet, but it is definitely on our radar. We've, we're always dreaming up ideas and tools and other things that you know we run into a problem and wish we had this one thing. So that's also on the radar. So all that being said, we also do have a backup plan, which is going back to corporate. Yeah, we don't have kids. And so now is kind of the perfect time to take this leap of faith. But in the future, I mean, who knows what's gonna, what our life's gonna look like in five or 10 years. We might wanna go back to an easy job or honestly, maybe not even a white collar job. I might wanna get a job in the trades or something like that now that I've kind of learned all these skills. But the bottom line is we can always go back. I, we both still have our bachelor's degrees in engineering. No one's taking that away from us. <laughs> I actually have my master's. I got that at w when I was in work. So I'm not really worried about having to find a job in the future. I still get emails from recruiters and stuff trying to get me signed up for engineering jobs. So I know that there's opportunities out there. And even if there's not in engineering. We've built so many <laughs> skills throughout this project that we can create an opportunity for ourselves. So right. we are not worried about that backup plan at all. And we're just hopeful that we can continue on this path of kind of self-employment working business for ourselves. business ownership yes i want to leave you guys with a quote that we both really love and i may not get this exactly perfect but it was from nelson mandela and he said that there is no passion to be found in plain small and living a life that's less than the one that you are capable of living so if you're watching this right now and you have a goal or a dream start formulating a plan Start putting in the work, put in 1%, 15 minutes every single day and see where you're at in three years because you honestly will never know unless you try. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.